Well, I think I'm not alone in saying that uh, having touched a, a, and allowed to hold a, a original, a prop offender in the 50, we're talking about, I think, 58, 59, I can't be actually saw, sure, but Jennings was the shot when I saw the light and I came within a quarter of an inch of plate glass of touching this thing, you know, and I was allowed to go in. Finally, we, we bugged the guy until he let us go. He knew we didn't have any money. And, he, and I picked it up and I just thought, this is, uh, this is the instrument that was made for me. For half a century, this legendary quartet, two guitars, two basses, have been much more than the most popular electric instruments the world has ever seen. They're icons. They made history. They're woven throughout the sounds and images of American music, American culture. Anyone who's even skimmed the history of Fender guitars knows that from the very beginning, Fender has always been about change, testing, experimenting, striving, reaching. Fender people live and breathe guitars. They know the Fender legacy of innovation. So when they decided to revamp the Stratocaster, the Telecaster, the Precision Bass, and the Jazz Bass. They knew the stakes were high. Their goal? Nothing less than a better sounding, better playing guitar. I've kind of grown up native to the shape and the sound and the feel of the Stratocaster and uh, kind of learned my way around the guitar on it. I fell in love with music with Buddy Holly, and he used the Strat. I just got one, and I, when I played it, it suddenly brought alive what I was looking for in music. We had one really good guitar in the band, which was a, a, a Fender Tele Deluxe that I had. So there's no place to hide on a Tele. You ain't got it. <laughs> Let me tell you something. The suck button will be on. My first P-Bass was, uh, was a gift from uh, Billy Joe. So the real choice for me was going to be, do you get a jazz, or do you get a precision? It's a 1969 Sunburst. Precision base. I went back to high school and I said, I just got a Fender. And everybody said, you got a Fender? I was the only one in my high school. I've tried every kind of guitar, I think. I, I tried to switch to a couple of other guitars over the years, and uh, one of them threw my back out of place. Always, always came back to a Telecaster, and, and now that's pretty much all I ever play. There's so many different ways, and there's really no wrong way to play the guitar, whether you're in the Sex Pistols. I, I was always a big fan of that time of music. I found out James Jameson played precision. Kurt Cobain kind of made me want to pick up a guitar, Beach Boys, and the Ventures especially, and, and all these groups were playing it. And then also the Hee Haw, you know, the TV show, they were all telly players. My heroes were bass players. There, there was Steve Harris, there was Geddy Lee, there was all these great bass players. Honestly didn't get turned on to jazz basses until, until Jocko. These are the instruments that allowed these sounds to ignite the molecules in our, in our spirit and our soul. They just work. We hear this word icon. Uh, sometimes we throw it around a little too easily, I think. We hear it often applied to musical instruments. In my view, there are really very few instruments that deserve this term. One remarkable thing about the new American Standard Fenders, all of them are, in fact, icons. So what does that word mean, and how does something get to be an icon? An icon, by definition, is something that means more than the thing itself. And it's only after a passage of time, when these performances and these records that have changed our lives, that have meant so much to us, have been performed on these Fender instruments, that they become true icons. So Fender has decided that they're going to improve the Stratocaster. They're going to improve the Tele and the Jazz Bass and the Precision Bass. I think a perfectly uh, understandable reaction might be, uh, oh really? Let's remember this about Leo Fender. He never stopped innovating, ever. This is what Leo Fender was about, and it's what Fender has been about from the beginning. 
just sounds perfect and plays perfect and you know it's built like a tank. I think the Strat is the preeminent personality guitar. If you want to be an individualistic player, this is the guitar for you. It's real rare to find an instrument that kind of splits down the middle and really tries to get, cover all bases. And I think the Stratocaster, more than any instrument, covers so many bases. Interesting that the, uh, how, how a guitar can define you. And uh, I've always been proud to, uh, to have people call me a Telecaster. When you play a Telecaster, your personality comes out of the guitar. More so to me than in any electric guitar I've ever heard. And I can say the same thing for the Fender bass. I don't feel like I have to play it. It's playing me. My love for jazz basses has always been based on its versatility. They have a lot of girth to the tone, and they have a lot of dynamics. The perfect guitar for a singer, a singer and entertainer, a guitar player. The Fender will let your arms take care of themselves. A Telecaster will let you just do that. The design of this thing is, is to me, it never ceases to amaze me, how oh, fantastic. They're practical, they look right, they sound good, they're durable, they're versatile. You know, Leo Fender had no interest in building vintage guitars or vintage amps. For him, it was all about the new. Uh, it would be very presumptuous for me to speak for Leo Fender. Uh, I don't know what he would say, but I did have the honor and pleasure of interviewing him a number of times. I believe that Mr. Fender would look at these evolutionary changes, these improvements. I think he would look at them and say, uh, good idea. For me, this is almost heresy to say this, but I truly believe it. I think right now, and in the last 10 years or so, Fender's making some of the best guitars they ever made, including anything from the beginning. And from a vintage freak like me, that's a serious statement. It seems to me to be the, the uh, uh, mythical archetype of all basses, which essentially it was, right? It was the first one they built. Fender is the only option for me uh, as a musician. And I mean, the, the instruments speak for themselves. They've been around for a long time and they just, they keep getting cooler and more cutting edge and they keep getting better. And the Strat with the one, not that no other guitar in the, in the universe actually does what the Strat can do. I think we all agreed on that. Bottom line is, you're always going to wind up back in front. You know, the genius of it, you know. To me, it was never an option uh, to go really outside of Fender. It just got such a kind of classic legacy to it. I just couldn't go back to anything else. I love Fender. There you have it. Big F. <laughs> <laughs>